it's Sarah Cray, and this coming week we are doing a gold terrarium. We have it here. We have beautiful plants. We have these gorgeous pop of red mushrooms that are going to go right here. So this is just a really fun project um, to play with. You can mix up colors, you can mix up the plants in it, but I'm just going to give you guys the basic step-by-steps that you need to complete this project. So the four steps that we are going to do for this terrarium is number one, we want to put in our frame and our metal frame. Um, number two, we're going to put in our foreground. And foreground just means what is closest to us, the viewer. And then step two, we're going to put in our midground, which is between um, the foreground. It comes right after the foreground. And then last step is our far ground. That's going to be farthest away from us, farthest away from the viewer. And usually when you're doing anything like landscapes or um, just showing depth, you want to establish those grounds and it just is going to give your um, painting a little depth and will really elevate it. So let's start with step one. Okay. So our step one is our metal frame. And because this frame is supposed to look metallic, we're gonna have lots of value change. So you wanna make sure that you're going in um, with some darks and some highlights, you know, that full dark to light change. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. And the colors that we're using today, just to go over them, we're using um, golden brown, and this is gonna be mainly for our frame. This is gonna be our gold part, but you can also mix it with your green to create like more of a yellow green leaf. We are using black here, and um, the black is just to help us um, darken some leaves, darken some dirt, just to add a little bit of value depth for our colors. Our next color here is jungle green, and this is gonna be our greens. We're gonna mix this with the blacks, we're gonna mix this with the gold um, to get some different variations. And then our last color is scarlet, which is just red, and that will be our mushrooms, our pop-up mushrooms. So we already have our outline traced here. Um, just to go over that really quick, if you're not familiar with tracing, I, we have an outline provided on the website that you can just download or if it comes in your kits. You're gonna wanna tape it down to your paper and then you're gonna take your graphite paper and put it dark side down like so. And then you're just gonna go ahead and outline it and you should end up with something like this. Now, if you're tracing and your lines are too dark, then just be a little bit softer with your pressure when you're outlining it. Now, don't push so hard. Don't push so hard. But at the same time, this project, because it's essentially only for the terrarium outline, it's not a huge deal if your lines are a little bit dark. So I'm gonna start with my outline here, and then I'm gonna look at where the corners are um, on my terrarium. So kind of where these different lines are meeting and then those are gonna be my darkest areas. So I'm going to mix my golden brown with a little bit of black to get this really dark color. And I'm just gonna put the dark color in the corners. Now I missed a line right here. I didn't draw the top of this thick line that's not a big deal. We can eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just kind of use your imagination as you go. Uh, I wanted to do a terrarium because I think that they're a really fun illustration. I actually have um, terrariums hanging in my home with air plants because I can't keep anything else alive and um, I just think they're super fun they're a great illustration and um, you can totally mix up the different um, things you put inside different plants to really make it your own um, and they're just cute and mushrooms are cute so it goes together so now that we have our dark edges. I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to just put a little bit of the golden brown on it and then um, I'm just going to blend this out. Now I don't want to blend it all of the way in terms of like blending it all the way to this corner. We want to have like a dark medium and light. So here's my dark, here's my medium and then here is my light here. And then we can connect that to this bottom. And we're gonna do this across all of these different um, sections. And then if you want a pop of color, that's where you can just drop in some of that golden brown for that pop of color. 
Now, when you're putting, putting water on your brush, what I usually like to do is if I'm blending this out, I'll, get, I'll wet my brush here, but I don't want it like totally dripping because um, then that's going to put too much water down on my paper. So usually I'll either like hit it on the side of the glass and let some of that water kind of drip off, or you can use your paper towel to like pat it off. But most of the time you don't want your brush dripping when you go to um, paint. So as you can see here, just from working on the dark outlines out, I'm getting a dark, a medium, and a light. And that's what I want to do across all of these areas. And the reason why we're doing this is because if you actually look at something that's metallic, um, because it's so shiny, it's going to have lots of variation of value. And value just means dark or light. So it's going to have, and um, I actually suggest you do this if you have something that's metallic at home, you can kind of just move it back and forth in the light and you'll see how the value changes because the, the light reflecting off that metallic changes as you move. And so uh, we just want to make it clear in our painting here that um, some areas there's light reflecting off of it, which is where it's really light value. And then there are some where there's not, which is where our dark values are. And I'm using a round two for this part because these are pretty um, thin lines that I'm working with. And just as you make your way up, you can just kind of blend into that dark color. Now, if you're going back and forth so much against a line that you lose the value change, I'm gonna do this on purpose here so you guys can see really quick. See how I'm going back and forth with my brush? that it actually becomes one value. It's not necessarily darker or lighter in another area. When that happens, what you're gonna have to do is you're just gonna have to lift out some color. So to do that, you just wanna have a clean brush, like have it um, kind of damp, and then I'm just literally gonna lift the color out and then pat it on my paper towel. And just do that over and over again until you get a light value. So now my center is lighter than my sides. So remember with watercolor, you can lift it. You can't totally erase something, but you can lift pigment or color off if it's too strong or if you wanna lighten an area. And that's actually the really nice thing with these um, paints, these watercolors, is even after you put color down, you can still pick it up you can still, still spread it around. They're really easy to work with. And then when you're getting to the edge over here, you'll see because this is like on the farthest edge and because of its angle, it's actually just a thin line instead of like these thicker ones. And so I'm just gonna go across with my two and just follow that thin line. And the reason why we want to establish our frame first and not paint our plants first is um, for me, I like having my frame there because then it just tells me um, how big my plants need to be and how far out I can go. It kind of gives me a good space to work with and it sets kind of the composition to the painting. Now there are some thin lines you can see here. It'll probably look better in the outline. I have some lines back here. So because a terrarium is three dimensional, there's another side to this terrarium, the back side. And um, because it's glass through here, you're gonna be able to see the back side of it. And so I included some of those lines, but I'm just gonna make them really, really light 
here. And I'm, I'm making them really light by just adding more water to my um, like gold brown wash that I have over here. And that's how we make things light in watercolor is we just add water to it. And that allows the paper to actually show through more and that acts as our white paint. And then when we paint the plants that go inside it, we're just gonna go over these lines if we run into them. And that's it for step one. We have our frame now. It has many values. We have dark, medium, dark. We have some lights over here. We just want to make sure that there is value change within this frame. And now we have a great place to start for putting our plants in. So we just put in our metallic frame. Now there are other ways to paint it. You don't have to follow it exactly. If you have a way you're comfortable with, do it that way. Um, my grandma always said there's more than one way to skin a cat. So that's what I think of when I paint. So you can do it any way you want. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna put in my mushroom, which is gonna be my um, foreground here, which is the thing closest to us. So for my mushroom, what I, what I did is I just kinda did an outline of the top part, and then um, we go from there. So I'm just gonna take my uh, round six here and get my scarlet out in the middle, and um, we do want to go behind this gold bar. So the, the front of the terrarium is actually closest to us. So all the plants that we put in here are going to kind of go behind it and around it. Um, and then that's just going to show that this mushroom is actually inside of the terrarium and not kind of like just floating in front of it. So I'm going to do like a half circle here. And then when I go to do the bottom, it's gonna like come up into like a lip. And then that's gonna allow us to see like the under part of the mushroom. So see how I'm working around this, this line right here. And a, a good way to do that if you have a hard time um, imagining is just kind of doing the line. And then when you get to the gold bar part, just lift up your brush and then go over it and then put it back down. And then I'm gonna just draw in some circles here cause mushrooms kind of have like dots on them. I wish my husband was here because he'll tell me what kind of mushroom this is. At least the ones in Smurfs have dots. Yeah, the ones in Smurfs. Or uh, um, what's that video game? Mario. Mario. <laughs> I don't know in real life. Uh, no, for sure they have dots in real life, right? So I'm just working around here. You can see I have smaller speckles. That's not a big deal. Just kind of make it however you want it. So I have my kind of bigger umbrella mushroom and then I'm gonna make the top of my smaller mushroom here. And this one is really like squatty. I think he's actually cuter than the other um, cause he's like long and um, like shorter. I don't, I just think he's cute. So I'm just going to um, same thing, kind of outline it when I get to the gold bar, I just lift my brush up and keep going around here. And then this one, I just kind of curved around the bottom down instead of up, because we're not going to show the underneath part of this mushroom. Then you do your dots. They don't have to all be the same size. They can be different. So it's like a little speckled mushroom top. And then while that's drying, I'm going to put in my dirt. And for the dirt, I'm just going to mix like so many colors. I'm just gonna mix, um, cause dirt is brown. And usually when you, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, dirt is brown. And so I'm just going to, usually when you mix a bunch of colors, it becomes brown anyway. So I'm gonna mix my golden brown with some red, with a little bit of black, maybe some green. And you just get this really rich brown color. And I'm going to leave a little bit of white space between the gold bar and my dirt. So I'm gonna start off with doing my line at the bottom. I'm gonna leave that white. And the reason why I leave that white is because I wanna show that there's like thickness to the glass, right? And it's, so it's not right on top. So you just put in the dirt and then I'm just gonna rinse my brush and spread out this color that I laid down. 
And I kind of like usually round the dirt at the top. It's not a perfect horizontal line that goes across. And if you want to add in drops of other color, you're welcome to. Because dirt kind of has that um, variation within it as well. And I'm going to finish off my mushrooms by doing the body of them. And for that, I'm just going to grab my black, but I'm going to add a lot of water to it to make it more of a gray. That's how we lighten a color is we just add water. And then I'm going to add in a touch, just a touch of the golden brown. So it has a little bit of color to it. Kind of like it's going to turn slightly greenish. So it's going to be like this gray green. And bottoms of mushrooms on this one, they're like thicker. So it's kind of round. And then I'm going to thin it up towards the top here. And remember, you're still working around this gold bar. Now don't get frustrated with the shape of your mushroom. They're all going to be so different from each other. And every time you paint this, they're going to turn out a little bit different. So just embrace however your mushroom looks. And then this one, I'm just going to do a little cause he's squattier. Just a stem like that. And then we're going to do the underside of our mushroom because um, some mushrooms, if you turn them over, they have all of those detail lines, which are really cool. So I'm going to switch to my two brush cause it's nice and thin. I'm going to pick up, I'm going to add more black to that mixture I just had. So it's nice and dark. I'm going to do the other side of the mushroom, which is basically just finishing um, that circle. So it almost looks like um, an ellipse. Is that the right word where it's like a squattier circle or an oval with um, kind of sharper corners. And then I'm just going to do some small line work using my two brush and light pressure. We're just going to follow this curved shape to where that stem is meeting the center of the mushroom. Just like that. And then mushrooms also have this like little uh, like these things. I don't know what to call them. This is where I wish my husband is very much into plants and he knows all of these bits and why they're there. All right, we get it. Michael's amazing. <laughs> All right, my husband is amazing. Okay, he's really smart. <laughs> but we're just going to add these little textured dots at the bottom, just the fat part of the body. Okay, so we just put in our foreground here. So if you're looking at your reference photo, we have our mushroom. And you can even tell just from looking at these two pictures that your mushrooms are going to be different every time you paint them that's okay what we're really looking for is just that pop of color because i think it just adds a lot of happiness to this terrarium and we put in our dirt and so our next step is we're going to put in the mid-ground which is kind of these plants um, like here that are going in the middle not necessarily the light ones back here that's going to be our last step um, we're going to put in these guys right here so that is, so we're on to step three. So step three, we're going to do our mid ground right now. And for that, I'm going to use my jungle green. And if you actually tuned into our feather painting, it's going to be very similar as when we did that feather that's striped, which is this um, plant over here. It's that succulent that kind of has those um, stripes that are like dark green and then white and then green. I can't tell you the name of it exactly, but if you know, you know, let me know. So I'm going to start off the base here and then we're just going to work our way up, leaving white gaps in between um, these green spaces for the stripes. And this succulent has lots of like tentacles. So um, here's one tentacle. We're going to do another tentacle. And you're just going to keep on going on these different tentacles. Okay, so we're continuing on with our tentacles here. I don't even know if tentacles is the right word, but I feel like you guys know what I'm saying, so it's fine. 
and they're just gonna kind of go up and out in all these different directions because this plant is like growing and you know being kind of wild so we're gonna have some go this way and these don't have to be um, like totally perfect people will understand what's going on because essentially they're going to be like, oh, there's a terrarium, there's plants in it. I got it. So I have my like stripey plant thing. And then if you're still feeling like this just looks like a bunch of dashes and I can't tell, you can add a little bit of like an outline on some of these tentacles here. If you need help kind of figuring out where things are. You don't have to if you're happy with kind of how your stripies are looking a little bit um, amorphous or something. That's fine too. Whatever you feel comfortable with. There's no wrong way. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our big green big leaf that's coming out here. Now this one's interesting because it's, it's inside the terrarium but it's going to come out and over. So when we do our leaves here... And I'm mixing my jungle green with like this brown mixture just to get a different green. So I'm gonna have my stem. And so basically what we wanna come across is this plant is inside the terrarium, but it's big and it's growing outside of the terrarium. So we're gonna start in and then go out. And how we do that is just what goes on top of the lines. So this part is still in the terrarium here. So we're gonna go behind this line and then it's going to kind of, this is where it's going to come out. And so because it's coming out, we're going to go over our frame here. So you see that just by going underneath one and going over this one, then it's clear that it's inside but coming out. Um, you might be worried to draw over the lines on your terrarium. Don't be scared. One, it's just a painting. You can make another. Two, that we're using a really dark green for this, so it should come across that it's going over pretty easy. And you only just need to make the line once. We're not just doing a ton of work. But then whatever leaves you do, those are also going to go over this gold bar to show that it's in front of it. And this one too. So the only part that we're really staying behind of the gold part is this bottom part right here because it's still inside that part. So we add our leaves. You can switch brushes if you want. I used a two to draw my stem, so that's just what's still in my hand, but if you like to do larger leaves, you're welcome to switch to a six. And usually for leaves, I just kind of draw them out and then fill them in. And then when I get to this part, I'm not gonna wanna draw above that gold bar and any leaves that I draw here, they're gonna stay within this square. So there's one, I'll do another one here. And remember to work around that gold bar. And I think that's, that's good. Um, we're going to add a couple more of these darker green plants to our midground. Um, I'm going to do another one coming up over here around the mushroom. So I'm going to start with my stem just around two. We're going to do a nice thin stem. And to get a thin stem, you just do light pressure. So um, actually, I can show you guys how to do that right now if you want. Um, I'm using a round two. And just by pressure, you can see how thick your stems are or your lines. So this is hard pressure here. You can see how thick that is. And then this is soft pressure. And remember when you're doing your lines to move your whole arm, kind of rotate at the shoulder and the elbow and not at the wrist. If you do it at the wrist, you're gonna get curved lines like that. So I'm going back to my painting. I have my two. I'm going to do light pressure because I like my thin stems. And this one is also coming up and out of the terrarium. So we're going to go over our gold lines here. So we're just adding the leaves onto this stem that we added here. 
If you want color variation, you can add a little bit of this golden brown to it. You'll see here that that's gonna make that leaf more yellow. And it's okay to have a yellow leaf on a mainly dark green stem. It's not a big deal. And then when I continue this down, I'm gonna go behind my mushroom because since this is our mid-ground and our mushroom is our foreground, then anything is gonna go behind our mushroom that we're painting right now. So I'm gonna continue on with these leaves, but they're just gonna be behind my mushroom and behind these gold bars. Just like that. We're going to add one more little green leaf into this mid-ground here. This one's just gonna be smaller. I'm going above the gold bar. And this project is way more loose in terms of placement. You can place these leaves anywhere, anywhere you want. Maybe you want it coming up on this side of the mushroom. That's okay. This is where you guys have that creative license to kind of make it your own. But I know that sometimes it's like scary making those decisions. It's harder to choose where things to go. So if you like following along with me, I'm cool with that too. And you also don't have to worry about each leaf being perfect because the wonderful thing about projects like this where there's so many elements and so many things going on is like, yeah, I have some leaves that are kind of like funky shaped and don't have like a super strong point. But when somebody looks at this, they're just looking at the whole thing. They're most likely not going to zero in on one leaf on one little stem. So don't do that to yourself either because I'm telling you, nobody's even gonna notice. Everyone's gonna be like, that's a terrarium, that's so beautiful. You're gonna say, thank you, I know. And that's, that's all you gotta say. Okay, so we just finished up putting in our mid-ground. Um, our mid-ground is the area between, and this is so obvious, but just, to be clear, it's, gonna, it's in between the foreground, which is closest to us, and our far ground. It's that middle area. Like on our mountains, how we have three mountains, the middle mountain is our mid-ground. So we just put that in. Our next step is um, our far ground that we're gonna put in, which is the leaves that are farthest away from us or at the back of their terrarium. We're doing step four. We're doing our foreground. So I'm actually gonna switch up my colors a little bit because I like to have variation with color. We're doing our far ground. Oh, did I say foreground? Yeah, foreground, foreground. You might get confused, it's fine. We are doing our far ground. Far ground is farthest away from us. It's at the back of the terrarium. All of these leaves and plants that we're painting are gonna be behind everything that we've painted. They can be blurry, they can be lighter, they can be so many different things. But I'm actually going to make mine different colors. So I'm actually adding, um, I want like, I want like a desaturated green with a hint of yellow. Let me tell you how to do that. You're gonna get some of your green. You're gonna mix in with this like gray that we have and a little golden brown. And I'm gonna show you what color that looks like. Now it's always handy to have a scratch paper if you wanna test colors before, but you can see the color difference between those two. And you can just play with it. You'll be like, what happens if I add more gold to a green? What does that look like? That's what that looks like. So just kind of play around. I'll do a combination of these colors, but I want my colors to be lighter and I want them to be different than what I just placed here. So I'm doing this like light desaturated green. And I'm gonna put another plant in here that's similar to this one, but not striped. So it's like a, um, another succulent that has tentacles but no stripes, so they're just solid um, areas. And they're gonna be like curved that kind of come up to a point, but because this is our far ground, anything you paint is gonna go behind what we've done so far. So like how we've been kind of painting behind this gold bar, we're gonna be painting behind the mushroom and the um, striped succulent over here. Just like that. And so because I worked my way around the mushroom and around this striped plant, it's clear that this plant is behind those and farther away from us. Now I'm just gonna add some more leaves here. Um, I'm gonna have a stem coming up this way. 
And when I do my stem, I'm going to not paint over this gold bar because I want it to be clear that it's behind it. So when I go get to it, I'm just gonna keep going, lift my brush so I'm not painting on that gold bar. And then when we get to the mushroom, I'm gonna do a leaf, but I'm not gonna do, do it in front of the mushroom because the mushroom is closest to us and that would throw off our illusion of where things are within the terrarium. And you can see here, it doesn't have to be exact. You don't have to do the same exact um, plants that I do in the same placement. It really is just an opportunity for you guys to kind of play and be like, I think a leaf would look really good here. So I'm gonna put another leaf here and to switch up kind of the shape of my leaves, I'm gonna switch to my two. And I'm gonna make these leaves like rounder and shorter just for difference in variation. And when you're painting these, you're gonna wanna paint in front of these really thin lines that we have here, because that's the very back of our terrarium. And so by painting over them, we're showing that these things are still inside and it keeps that um, goal that we have of this is the back of the terrarium. So everything we're painting is going in front of that. Basically this, um, Painting is just a great exercise in um, helping you establish space within an area, how to paint within and out of something. You thought you were just painting a terrarium. We're teaching you things here, real things. And then we're gonna do a couple just smaller. The, the main thing at this point is to just do um, different shapes. So I'm gonna do a much smaller leaves here and you can switch it up halfway through. They don't have to be like so perfect all the time. So far this leaf is symmetrical where the leaves are matching on each side. You don't have to keep up with that. Maybe do one there. Maybe do another one there. Then you go back to symmetrical, you know? You can switch it up. We're working behind the big leaf because this is behind it. <laughs> you guys got that? We're working behind it because it's behind it. And I'm gonna do another little one coming this way. Here. And then I'm just gonna do one more really thin one, kind of coming up. I feel like it's kind of bare in this area. So I'm gonna do just like a very delicate little guy And remember to paint in front of that really thin gold line, which is the back of the terrarium. To go kind of behind these succulents that we have. So that's looking good. I feel like I need just a couple more things over here. I'm switching up my colors. I'm gonna add a little bit more black to get this kind of more gray. You know how succulents have that really nice, almost gray green color? I love that color so much. And this one's coming up out of it also. This one is gonna be a little bit rounder. And because it's coming out, we're painting over that line. And you can have these come as far out as you want. Now this terrarium is a little tamed, but if you want your terrarium to be totally crazy and wild and have these leaves reaching up and out over the whole thing, feel free to do so. This is your painting. And then le these leaves are going behind what we've already painted since it's our far ground that we're putting in. And I think I need like one more little guy coming in this way. So to finish up my foreground, I'm just gonna kind of like blend in the dirt here. 
because I don't want like it super clean on the, the edge because even when we're looking at something um, like ground, we think that it like it's two dimensional so it stops right at the top but it actually kind of keeps going up. So I'm just gonna blend these out just a little at the bottom so it's like, no, the dirt keeps on going, these plants keep on going. And I think it's kind of fun just to mess things up a little bit in watercolor, kind of just play around. Just like that. So that's it, we just put in our far ground, which is the farthest part away from us, <laughs> the farthest area. And um, with these four steps that we just did, so the first step that we did is we put in our metallic frame. And that just gave us a good idea of where our composition goes, um, where to work from. I like having an idea of where to start when I'm painting, so that's just a good framework for where to do this project. The second step that we did is we put in our foreground, which is what's closest to us, and that is our dirt and our mushrooms. The second step that we did is our midground, which is right behind the mushrooms and dirt. This is where we put in these nice dark green plants, the striped succulent, these big leaves. And then our very last step that we did is we put in our far ground, which are the plants that are farthest away from us that are on the back end of the terrarium. Switch it up with color, switch it up with styles, really make it your own, and that's it. Okay, so we just finished painting our terrarium here. Um, he's nice and big and beautiful and green. It has different colors, different values, so many different things going on. Um, he's flowing with life, which is kind of really why I like this project. So if you're painting this, please post it, please share it. I know it's so scary putting your stuff out there, but it's important for us to be willing to be vulnerable and share our work. And I think that when we share our courage, then other people are willing to put it out there and I would love to see it. So um, you can post it, you can tag us in it on Instagram. And if you're new to watercolor and you might not have the supplies, we offer kits. So you can buy this in a kit, just one off, or we offer a subscription box, which is all the projects for the month plus a little postcard in there for our Let's Make Art Matter, where we really try and paint something and make somebody's day with it. So thank you so much for painting this with me and I can't wait to see it.